What's up Bluey, it's Guys here, hope you are doing great. Are new development properties or new build properties worth the hype? Spoiler alert, no they're not. In this video I'm going to show you guys why I completely stay away from new development properties and why you should probably avoid them as well. Just remember this is my opinion and what works for me won't necessarily work for you so take everything that I say with a grain of salt but like you know on this channel we we don't really care about the emotional side of investing in property we want to focus on the numbers and if it's going to help us reach our financial goals with that said new developments obviously also has some cool advantages one of the main things people talk about when it comes to new developments is the section 13 sex act this simply allows qualifying investors to claim up to 55 percent of the property's cost value over a period of 20 years, which can ultimately reduce your taxes or help you to claim back taxes. Simply put, it's a way that you can reduce your taxes over the term of your loan, but at the end of the day, you will already reduce your taxes because these properties will be cash flow negative or they will have a shortfall. Some of the other advantages of buying a new development is obviously peace of mind because you know you invest in a newly built property so you won't have to struggle with any repairs or maintenance. This is also some of the marketing tactics that the developers use because they normally say you don't have to pay levies in your first year which sounds like a huge bargain but if you think of it obviously it's not necessary for them to charge you a levy because ultimately the running cost of the complex is going to be very low because it's a newly built property most of the time you also have a smaller upfront investment cost because the developers will say you don't have to pay transfer duty or bond or registration cost depending on the specific developer of course there's many other advantages as well but looking purely at a financial perspective it's definitely something to avoid and I'll show you why. If I go to iGrow's website which is one of the most popular developers and you'll probably see these ads all over the internet just remember this is used as an example we'll see that they have this very good looking website and showing everything in such a way that it's easy to understand and it just seems like they're selling this perfect investment. When we scroll down, we have so much information. We're not gonna run through that today. I wanna show you the nitty gritty stuff and um, we're gonna look at this two bedroom, one bathroom apartment, which is priced at 869,000 Rand. So we can see that the average unit size is around 59 squares, or let's call it 60 square meters. And they say that the projected rental income is 6,300 Rand. The projected monthly bond amount at 30 years with prime rate at 11.75, it's 8,772 Rand. The estimated levies is 958 and the estimated rates is 350. So they say the estimated monthly contribution or shortfall will be around 2,705 Rand. That already is not a good investment because it's going to cost you 2,705 Rand each and every month. Let's say we want to buy these properties based on appreciation. We feel that in this area, this specific property will appreciate over time. Then it might make sense for some people to just cover the shortfall and reduce the taxes at the same time. In my opinion, it doesn't really make too much sense. What I wanted to show you guys is they say that the bond and transfer fees is included, which is obviously great because it can save you like 50 or 60,000 Rand from day one, which is a, a big selling point for new investors or new home buyers as well as a 54,000 Rand rental assist. And this is very important to understand because the 54,000 Rand is only for a specific time period and usually it's around two years. Just have a look at this. And when we click on the financial analysis tab, we can see this whole detailed explanation or financial analysis of that specific property. And what I want to show you is the specific unit that we looked at now that was selling for 869,000. When we scroll to the right, I'll just highlight the most important information. 
um, which would be the projected monthly rental income, which they said is around 6,300 Rand. Just remember this is projected and not guaranteed. Then we have a 100% loan over 30 years at prime rate, which gives us a bond repayment of 8,772 Rand. Then they give us a rental assist of 44,400 Rand. So already on the previous one, they said up to 54,000 Rand, but the specific unit that we are choosing is only 44,000 Rand. Again, the monthly levies will be 958, the property rates 350, and then the rental management of 11.5%, which is very, very high. And here's one thing that I'd like to point out, if you decide to use your own rental management company, let's say they only charge you 6%, you won't qualify for this rental assist anymore. So you have to use their rental management, which is very high because it's 11.5% and most people charge basically half of that. So again, that's just something that I really do not like. And then when we use our gross income, it shows that it has a gross yield of 11.19% which most people would feel like just yes, this is not too bad. If we look at the projected monthly cash flow or in this instance shortfall, we can see the first year it's going to cost us 2,705 Rand. The second year it will go down to 2,649 Rand. And here's where the monthly rental assist falls away. So like I mentioned, most of the time it's only for two years. So it goes up to 3,688 Rand per month projected based on these numbers. So in my opinion, they use all of these fancy calculations to impress people, but at the end of the day, it feels like there's always some hidden costs. So I went ahead and input all the necessary details in my Excel sheet. You've probably seen this before, and this is something that I cover in my property course as well. So if you are interested, feel free to pop me an email and you can get access to the sheet. What I've done is I've entered all of the necessary details. And one of the disadvantages is that we have to buy this property at full asking price, meaning we can't buy it for less than it's actually worth. So the first issue, in my opinion, is you won't have any equity from the first day of purchase. If we use the same rental income, the same bond and the same levies and the same rates and taxes, and um, we decide to use our own rental commission so we don't have the rental assist anymore, but we have someone to manage the property for us for 6% and the commission will go down to 378 Rand. Something else we need to consider is this property won't be tenanted all the time. So we have to add some vacancy because it's a new development. Chances are that the vacancy will be quite low. So I used a 4% vacancy using all of these numbers we can scroll down and we can see that the monthly shortfall on this property is a massive 4,410 Rand, considering that we won't be able to use the rental assist. So at the end of the day, this property is going to cost you 52,000 Rand a year. And imagine you had to buy five of these properties. If we scroll up, we can see our gross yield is only 9%. And our 1% rule is not passed, it's below one, as well as a zero Rand equity position. Some people will say that you can actually receive great appreciation with these new developments. I see it differently because if you buy something new, it will first depreciate before its value goes up in time. Although the value of the property might go up, it's only going to keep track with inflation at best. If a property has a lot of wear and tear over time, its value will of course go down if it is not maintained correctly. With that said, if you learned something from this video, consider giving it a thumbs up up. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Is this something that you will consider investing in? Maybe you already own a new development property. If you do, there's nothing wrong with it. I just try to share my opinion and my thoughts on these investments. 